Good morning. Please welcome Garnell Whitfield. <laughs> Reverend Mark Blue. <laughs> Congressman Tim Kennedy. <laughs> City of Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown. And if you're able, please stand and welcome the 57th governor of the great state of New York, Governor Kathy Hochul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I do want to acknowledge the presence of extraordinary elected leaders who I saw rise up two years ago to look deep within to console a community. And I want to thank each and every one of them. Uh, first of all, Mayor Byron Brown, I'll be introducing you in a couple moments, but uh, you know, the depth of courage and character that was on display during that mo those days and weeks that followed, I want to thank you for providing the leadership to this community that it needed. Let's give another round of applause. <laughs> to uh, first time for me to officially say this, but welcome Congressman Tim Kennedy. Uh, congratulations on ascending to that important role to help deliver for Western New York. Look forward to partnering with you as well. Our county executive, Mark Polenkars, who's been there through every crisis, uh, whether it's re weather related or related to something as tragic as this horrible shooting, I wanna thank our county executive for his leadership as well. Uh, I've been joined by Tim Hoags, my commissioner of the New York State Civil Service Commission. Tim Hoags is here. Commissioner Jackie Bray, my Commissioner of Homeland Security and Emergency Service, who jumped right on this issue and was there to provide support, as well as my entire team, Stacy Lynch, my Chief of Staff, can't be here, but she was here embedded with the community for many weeks afterward. Uh, John Persons, the President and CEO of TOPS, I want to thank them for their sensitivity and how they've managed this uh, in the aftermath. And I have such incredible gratitude to those who are committed to developing a, a living and lasting memorial to honor the survivors and the lives lost. Uh, Chairman Mark Blue, Reverend Mark Blue, I wanna thank you for doing what some would have thought was impossible, bringing people together with, toward a common vision. And this will be part of your legacy of what you're able to help give back to a grieving community. And I wanna thank you and all the members of the 514 Memorial Commission. Please stand and let's recognize everyone involved in the commission. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> On a day like today, I'm reminded of Psalm 34. The Lord is near the brokenhearted and saves the crushed of spirit. The circumstances that draw us together today are again so painful, and yes, our spirits are crushed. Two years ago tomorrow, a shadow fell over our beloved Buffalo, a shadow created by hate, pure evil, and a despicable act of violence, a racially motivated mass shooting right at top supermarket that tore through the heart of this community. Three Buffalonians were injured, Zaire Goodman, Jennifer Warrington, and Christopher Braden. We thank God they survived the attack. But tragically, 10 of our neighbors, family members, loved ones were stolen that day. Roberta Dreary, Margus Morrison, Andre McNeil, Aaron Salter, Geraldine Talley, Celestine Cheney, Hayward Patterson, and Catherine Macy, Pearl Young, and Ruth Whitfield. These two years, I cannot imagine the searing pain, the empty seat at the dinner table, the office, the front porch. Second Mother's Day, without those who are moms. Father's Day, Christmas's birthdays, there's just a constant reminder of the loss. It just doesn't seem to stop. And I want all the families to know 
We will never leave you to carry this burden alone. We are at your side. And we'll also never be defeated by hate. We'll only rise up stronger in the face of it. That's who we are as Buffalonians. That's who we are as New Yorkers. I'm a daughter of Buffalo, born and raised here. It means there's steel running through my veins. You had to have a toughness to survive in this great city. Something we all have. We draw on it often. I've seen this city's struggles and I've seen this city's triumphs. But I've never, ever witnessed such a powerful display of what it truly means to be a community as I did in the aftermath of this massacre. In the face of unimaginable horror, Buffalo Buffalonians could have easily turned inward, dealing with their own grief, but instead they reached out. We saw it in the strength of victims' loved ones who channeled their grief into advocacy and action, refusing to let hate win. We saw it in the Buffalonians who opened their doors, their hearts, their arms, even their wallets to help their neighbors in need. We saw it in the businesses around town, offering groceries and support while tops such a lifeline to East Buffalo was closed. And we saw it in our clergy, the leaders, who they themselves were so deeply wounded and hurt, but they were able to find the depth of compassion necessary to support a grieving community. I am forever inspired by what I saw here in my hometown in response. So not just as your neighbor, but also as your governor, I've made it a central priority to do what we can do to continue to address East Buffalo's immediate needs and take on the systemic challenges that have faced this community far too long. Literally that same year, a month later, we directed $50 million to the city, added another $10 million the following year, all for many purposes. We heard from the community, what do you need right now? We need to help struggling homeowners. We need to help jumpstart economic growth, help the small businesses become stronger, workforce training, address food insecurity, increase access to healthy food options, and expand affordable mental health to people of all ages and have centers for people to deal with this unique trauma. We've invested a billion dollars in a Kensington Expressway. Why? Because to me, it had always been a visible reminder of racism that has manifested itself even in our infrastructure because people didn't care. The community didn't have voices that were powerful at the time. It divided a neighborhood for generations. We continue to engage monthly meetings with neighbors on how state agencies can work together and figure out how to best serve these communities, not just because of this Hey, we'd started this before with major investments, because I know this community, but also saying this is not a short-term fix. We are in this for the long haul. But also what brings us here today, we launched the 514 Memorial Commission, engaging family members, victims, and survivors, residents, local artists, business leaders. And again, I want to thank Reverend Blue for chairing this and all the members, especially those who had to relive the trauma and the pain over and over and over, all driven toward this purpose to find this appropriate place of reflection, a place to show love. They were asked to develop a community-driven way to honor those we lost. And I'd also like to thank the leaders I mentioned at this time before I continue I know what you're all been waiting for. You want to see this, right? You want to see what this journey has been about. So I'd like to ask Mayor Brown, Reverend Blue, Congressman Kenny, and Garnell Whitfield to join me up here for a moment.
I'm proud to unveil the final design of the permanent 514 memorial to honor the victims of this tragedy, keep their memories alive, and help this community heal. The design is called Seeing Us by artists Jin Young Sung and Douglas Allegood. It was followed after an in-depth process, including public meetings of community survey, where the public could share their thoughts about how this memorial could look and feel. The community selected Seeing Us as the best representation of the community's hopes and dreams for this memorial. As you can see, it contains 10 interconnected pillars inscribed with the names of the 10 victims. And it'll also include a new building, which will be a central hub for education, exhibitions, community activities, and events. And to kickstart the construction, today I'm proud to announce we're investing as a state an additional $4.1 million, bringing the total state share to $5 million. <laughs> this will serve as the foundation for the much needed future support from all levels of government, the philanthropic and business community, and anyone who wants to help bring this memorial to life. The commission will soon embark on a year-long fundraising campaign to raise the remaining funds necessary to break ground. This tragedy shocked us. It devastated us. It pushed us to what we thought were beyond our limits. But it didn't break us. It didn't break us. Instead, it revealed a strength that runs deep in the veins of this city, the strength of a community that binds together and refuses to be defined by acts of hate. There's a saying that grief is the price we pay for love. These people were well loved, gauged by the depth of grief that is still so palpable. I wish I had the power to take that pain away. It's hard when you're the governor of New York to feel powerless about something because people look to you. We can't erase that pain, but we show love and honor and show future generations what these people stood for and the depth of their family's love. This will endure forever. And today we celebrate those we lost, remember them, but also know that love can rebuild. Love can help heal. Even in the darkest of times, there is still light. And that light shines brightly with compassion and unity. And most of all, the unwavering spirit of the people of this great community will carry the memory of these victims in our hearts forever. And in their name, we'll continue the fight for racial justice, all in their names. That is my commitment to you. Thank you for enduring, my friends. Thank you for being so proud, so strong, making me so proud of all of you. Thank you, and may God bless the great city of Buffalo. Thank you. With that, someone I've spent an enormous amount of time through all kinds of storms, man-made and human-made. This was a cataclysmic human-made storm unpredictable in its ferocity of what it did. But also, in the aftermath, you show it what you're made out of. Mayor Brown, thank you for showing all of us what you were made out of at a time when our community so needed you and your leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, our Mayor Byron Brown. Thank you very much, Governor Hochul. Governor, thank you for your leadership and thank you for your continued tremendous support for Buffalo and Western New York. And thank you for your partnership on the 514 Memorial Commission. I would like to recognize again some of the elected representatives that are with us. I want to recognize our county executive, Mark Polencars. Common Council President Christopher Scanlon.
Common Councilwoman and Majority Leader Leah Halton Pope, <laughs> Common Councilwoman Zanetta Everhart, <laughs> Acting District Attorney Mike Kane, <laughs> Erie County Legislature Chairwoman April Baskin, <laughs> Erie County Legislator Howard Johnson. I also, like the governor, would like to thank Reverend Mark Blue, chairman of the commission for his steadfast leadership and dedication. I also want to thank all of the commission members uh, who have done such a tremendous job. I want to ask them all to stand and be recognized one more time. I also want to thank the many businesses and organizations that have been supporting the commission throughout this process. I am confident that the 514 Memorial Commission will create a fitting memorial to honor the precious lives that were lost and the many others that were impacted on that day. We will never forget. It is my hope that with this 514 memorial, we can offer some sense of healing, peace, and hope for the future. Part of the 514 memorial planning process is fundraising. And today on uh, behalf of the governor and I, I want to announce the creation of the 514 memorial fundraising committee. Uh, we are announcing today four chairs of this fundraising committee. They are SUNY trustee Eunice Lewin, Jonathan Dandies, Rich Product, Corporate Vice President of Government Relations and Special Product Projects, Dottie Gallagher, President and CEO of the Buffalo Niagara Partnership, and Dr. Michael Edbauer, President of Highmark Western and Northeastern New York. Let's give them a round of applause. I thank them all for agreeing to participate, and I also thank them for their previous work on various aspects of our community's response to 514. Now it is my pleasure uh, to introduce our newly elected member of Congress, Congressman Tim Kennedy. Good afternoon. And uh, thank you very much, Mayor. And uh, thank you very much, Governor. Uh, both for your leadership. Let's give the mayor and governor another round of applause. <laughs> to uh, Pastor Mark Blue and to all of those members of the 514 Memorial Commission, thank you so much for your leadership and your vision and coming together to uh, make this vision a reality. Uh, two years ago, tomorrow, Buffalo was changed forever. We all remember the first phone call we received, the horror, as we realized the full extent of what had happened, and then the heartbreak of burying 10 people whose lives were stolen simply because of the color of their skin. It was one of the darkest days in our city's history and one of the darkest days in our country's history, brought on by a perpetrator whose name will not be repeated in service of a vile ideology who we wholeheartedly reject. Even in the darkest moments, rays of light shined through. Our community rallied to the support of the families. We mourned with them as they buried their loved ones. We ensured that the supply of fresh food continues into the Cold Springs neighborhood, a food desert. We were embraced by cities that had come before us in experiencing the evil of gun violence. 
and we rallied for change, and we got it. My friend, Councilwoman Zanetta Everhart, nearly lost her son that day. By the grace of God, Zaire Goodman survived and is thriving today. I had the privilege of joining Zanetta and Commissioner Whitfield and other families of the victims in Washington, D.C., as they testified before Congress with both parties present, refusing to hold back details as they explained exactly what had happened in our community. And for the first time in 30 years, Congress acted and instituted new gun safety laws. But it wasn't enough. At the same time, New York State acted and instituted some of the toughest gun laws in the entire nation. We know that there is still much more work that needs to be done. The unveiling of this design today is one of those steps that we can take to memorialize and honor the victims of 514. We have an obligation as a community and as a country to honor each of the victims of this evil act. Tomorrow on the floor of the United States Congress, I will honor the victims of this terrible atrocity. I've invited with me the New York delegation as well as the Congressional Black Caucus. This memorial that we celebrate today, when completed, will be a testament to the values that each of the victims embodied generosity, kindness, and love. It's the lesson from them that we need to carry with each of us to see humanity in everyone, to spread love and compassion, and to reject hatred wherever it rears its ugly head. I again want to thank the entire 514 Memorial Commission for their selfless dedication it is difficult work, and we're all grateful for each and every one of them for putting together this extraordinary product. Now, it's my honor to introduce the chair of the 514 Memorial Commission, the pastor of Second Baptist Church in the great city of Lackawanna and president of the Buffalo branch of the NAACP, our friend, Pastor Mark Blue. Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to uh, thank Congressman, I can say it for the first time, Congressman Kennedy uh, for the introduction. I want to thank our Governor Kathy Hochul and Mayor Byron Brown uh, for entrusting me uh, with this opportunity to serve our community. For a lot of positions that I've held this was one I was voluntold. <laughs> but I uh, take it on with a badge of honor. I want to thank the commission members. Uh, they've stood up several times. I'm not going to ask them to do that again. This is not church. <laughs> but I want to thank you for your willingness to serve. Uh, we've had some emotional meetings. We've had some crying meetings. We've had some laughing meetings. We formed a bond that will never be broken uh, from this experience. Uh, this tragedy has uh, brought us together in more ways than one. I am so proud of our city, of our community. Not one car was flipped. Not one window was broken. Not one fight ensued, but what it did, it galvanized us to action. And I am so proud that we did not end up in the headlines as one that imploded, but we're in the headlines of one that came together. I want to give some special thank yous to some of the organizations that have helped us in this journey. 
at the Buffalo Urban League. Steve Carmino, who was the architect. Uh, we've had him, he helped us in designing and writing our RFPs and RFS process. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Amitria Walls, who was the fellow from Buff State College University. m and Bank, who helped promote the survey. JR, JBR Insights and the University of Buffalo Regional Institute. And there are so many more uh, that have helped us in doing the work that we have done. As always, uh, I said this in the very beginning, we only have one time to get this right. There's no do-overs. And I, I stand with that in this design that has been uh, selected today it was a unanimous vote by the commission. Uh, again, uh, as you see the clip that you're going to see, you will also understand why. Uh, the design is, is something even the families have seen, and they helped in that agreement, in that decision-making process. We have been community-driven every step of the way from the community meetings we've had to the surveys, this is a result of what you said you would like to see. And we were the ones to help carry it forward on your behalf. And again, it is a, a great honor to do that. I, I'm glad to hear about the fundraising that has started, in the, but we can't stop there. I would love that before we leave this room, we have all the money that we need to start the project. <laughs> that can happen. I'm a man of faith. I believe <laughs> it can happen. We, we have a good start. But starting is not what we want to do. We want to finish. So we'll be working with the chairs. The commission is not over. We're not done. We still have a work to do, and we're going to continue to do the work. Uh, once the funds have been committed, we're looking for a great opportunity to showcase Buffalo again in the good light. As a city of neighborly love, of good communities, we want to do that. And one thing I believe, we can do that together. Well, let me say it like this. We will do that together. There's no op. We're going to do this together. And I've said enough. If not, I'm going to start preaching. <laughs> but I would like to introduce uh, one, of the, one of the heartbeats of the committee. And you know there are five heartbeats, but one of the heartbeats <laughs> of the committee. And that is uh, Brother Whitfield, Garnett Whitfield. Let's give him a hand as he comes. Good afternoon. Today we take another step on the road toward the realization of this project. And this road that we're on, unfortunately, is a long and difficult one that neither of us has ever had to travel before. And the truth of the matter is none of us know where this road will ultimately lead us or what lies at the end of it. But even in that uncertainty, here we are. Assembled from different walks of life, different lived experiences, all separated by the uniqueness of our individuality, some by the loss of a loved one, some by race, some by gender, some by age, but some separated by hate, by discrimination, segregation, and Main Street. And yet, here we are in this moment bound together on this journey of collective grief that is 514. I and my family grieve for our mother. The other nine families grieve for their loved ones. Those injured grieve for their health. Witnesses grieve for their peace. The community grieves for all of us. 
and many of us, but not all of us, grieve for justice, grieve for fairness, grieve for this community and others that like it were intentionally created to stunt the growth and kill the hopes of our people. And yet, here we are, brought together in our collective grief by the murderous and hateful events of 514, assembled together to announce that a step on this long and arduous journey has been taken in the choosing of a design and its team to build a permanent memorial. Now I'm just calling it a step, it's only a step, but you have to understand that this step is made up by, of many steps because to their credit, this group, this commission, appointed by Governor Hochul and Mayor Brown, who I thank for their commitment and their leadership, have worked diligently over many months, volunteering their time, talent, and resources to ensure that we, that what we do honors the lives of those lost, but also that it serves as a bridge and a catalyst to a new tomorrow, one that will forever enshrine the memory of our loved ones in the hearts and minds of future generations, shine a light on the injustices of the past, and be a beacon of hope that will light our paths forward. I'm thankful again to the governor and the mayor's commitment and leadership and for the work of the commission. I'm thankful for this community for its warranted skepticism and for the trust, patience, and participation that it gives in spite of it. I'm thankful to the families of those lost who through no fault of their own now belong to the ever-growing family of survivors and have allowed me to represent them on this journey. I'm especially thankful to my family for their love, their support, and their sacrifice that has allowed me to be a part of this. But lastly, I thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for everything. And I am confident, completely confident, that no matter what challenges lie ahead, that he that began a good work in us shall complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. Thank you. Please direct your attention to the screen in front of the room.
please welcome back to the podium, <laughs> Reverend Mark Blue. Uh, there's, whenever you have a list of names and you forget one, if you don't have them on your list, I don't want to get anyone upset. We want to thank Paul Tremalone from the ECIDA, who was very instrumental in helping us uh, to do the work that we have done. Uh, at this moment, let's just have a word of prayer. I think after seeing this, we need to just call on the Lord. Lord, we thank you once again, and Lord, we honor you. We ask right now, Lord, that you just continue to bless our efforts into fulfilling and honoring the opportunity to serve, to reflect, to grieve properly, and to learn to love and not allow hate to continue to enlarge itself. Touch all of our officials and government Touch each and every individual family that is represented here today. And Lord, bless our entire community as we continue to assemble to speak, O oh Lord, on your behalf and to help one another in all that we are doing in life's journey. Lord, we call upon you while you are yet near, while you can hear us, O oh Lord. Because, Lord, you said you will always hear us. Lord, we ask that you bless us individually and collectively as we go through this journey called life to do your will. We thank you. In the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, amen. Please remain seated. At this point, we're going to invite the commission members for a photo with the mayor and governor.